uh, coming in the last transcontinental railroad to make it doing it purely with, almost without any government subsidy at all certainly with no grants, no loans or all the rest of it a uh, really heroic action uh, this was the so called Great Northern which was which started up in uh, Duluth, Minnesota way up in northern Minnesota and skirted the Canadian border uh, sometimes on the American side, sometimes the Canadian side, something like that, and comes into Seattle. And notice all these, even though there are only a few continental railroads, they all compete with each other. If you're going to send shipments out the coast of the west coast or over to the east, you can take any one of these routes. And so they're all in, really in competition. So, of course, this, this is called the Great Northern. The Great Northern is completed around the 1870s, I believe, and it was, of course, and mostly in competition with, with Northern Pacific. Uh, and this was organized and by an entrepreneur with James J. Hill, the last of the great railroad magnates. Uh, Hill is a very interesting character. He's one of these people who, who fit the complete Horatio Alger picture, uh, which is the so-called stereotype, Horatio Alger stereotype. He, um, <clears throat> he was born in Canada, poor. He was born in a log cabin. He was actually born in a log cabin, which is not something, you know, it sounds great, it's not something to, to really hope that you're born in. He kind of came from a, a Scotch-Irish farm in Ontario. Uh, he was um, became a clerk. He's uneducated. Comes with, most of these people are uneducated. He, he becomes a clerk. Goes to, he comes to the age of 18. Emigrates to St. Paul, Minnesota, and um, becomes. He starts uh, getting interested in. He starts buying out small bankrupt railroads and starts integrating them and making them more efficient. He's an extremely efficient construction person. Uh, and uh, he was also, uh, he, he started, his first railroad was called St. Paul, Minnesota, Manitoba Railroad, a small railroad. He, he, and he, what, he, what he went for, I think he was also short and thin. A lot of these guys are quite short, otherwise, he's a big entrepreneurs then. Uh, Rockefeller was quite, was very short. Um, <laughs> The um, I, I mention that because there are not too many short entrepreneurs these days. They were short. At any rate, the um, he, he and he specializes in low and low and low rates, cheap freight rates. Of course, freight is a big thing. The passengers are, from an economic point of view, didn't mean much for these companies, and a large volume and being competitive. And so he's very efficient. He's a very efficient railroad. It's always out out competed North Pacific. It made the profits is extremely. There was, no, there was no phony construction company. The whole thing was on the up and up. It's kind of a heroic thing, the James J. Hill, and so I. Uh, uh, it's, a, it's a good counter image, and he. Um, and by the way, when he uh, he encouraged immigration, but he was there. He knew he knew the area. He raised wheat in this area, Manitoba. He knew exactly, you know what the climate was like. He didn't have to lie to the public because he was actually there. None of these guys. These pamphleteers are somewhere sitting in Philadelphia. I don't know what's going on in the Northwest.